So in this video, we're going to do a calibration on a 9000 series cart and the X35 and the extend feature. So with the X35, we have the ability to extend that to a tablet or your phone. And from there, we can do all of our calibration process without touching the monitor. So to start with, we're going to want to put the right products into the tanks that we're using and the ones that we're going to be calibrating for. To do that, touch on the tanks that you want, bring them out to the bigger portion of the screen so you can actually see them. So we're going to, we have product in tank number one and we're going to press tank one. It's now out in the big portion of the screen. You'll notice that 1152 was in the tank, but that's not what we're calibrating for. So we're going to want to change that product. To change that product, we'll hit 1152. It brings out our list. On the top there, you have your product name. So we'll want to change that product name to what we're calibrating for. We touch on it and we'll go down. We'll scroll, that, scroll down to what we are actually calibrating. And today we're going to be calibrating floor dry. Touch on floor dry, hit OK. So this tank does actually have floor dry in it. And we're going to show you that we can actually calibrate any product. All we're really looking for in the product is the cal factor on the bottom. Then below that you have your rate increment. So you, if you want to change your rate increment, you can do that. Or if you've already set that up in your products list prior to seating, it'll bring that in for you. So just touch on it and you can set what you want. And then you'll have your preset rate one. So you'll want to set your rate that you're going to be seating at. Today we'll do 90 pounds. So just go in there, enter the 90 pounds, press the green check mark and you're good. And you can put a preset rate two in there. And then below that you have your density. That density, all we use the density for is how much physical product we can actually fill this tank with. And if you want to figure out your own densities, grab one of your white pails, fill it right to the top, level with the top, and then weigh it. This pail is 1.04 of a cubic foot. So now once we weigh this product and we calculate off that 04, now we have pounds per cubic feet and we can put that in the monitor for our density. And then below that you have your cal factor. Each product needs a cal factor to actually turn the meter. So if you build a product and it doesn't have a cal factor in it, you're going to have to put one in there for a starting point to calibrate with. So to figure out what you need, if you have a low output, you'll want to put 0.1. A double flight, you'll put 0.2. Single flight, 0.3. And a high output, 0.4. To enter it in, you just touch on the calibration factor button there, and then you can enter in what you want for a cal factor to start with. This one has a starting cal factor of 0.2. We'll go with that. Once we have that all set up, our product is set up in the products list. Then it'll ask you, do you want to set your requested rate as your preset rate one? We'll hit yes. So it'll set our requested rate as 90 pounds. And that's what we want to calibrate for. So to go on from there, we'll bring out our configuration tab which is the wrench and, and gear. On the top of that calibration configuration tab, you have manual speed, which you'll have to set if it's at zero. Because it, if it's at zero, it doesn't know what speed you want to spin the meters at. So to change that, hit manual speed. Enter in the speed that you consistently seed at. And then press the green check mark. Then from there, we can go in and we can actually set up to do a calibration. We'll hit multi-tank calibration. In there, you'll have automatic tank calibration. Now it puts you into the calibration wizard. And then you just have to read the steps and follow it through. It's saying you're doing a granular calibration. Press next to proceed. Now you'll notice that our calibration screen is up and we're ready to go. We can go to the side of the cart and we can get up, get set up there. First thing we'll want to do is find our remote, turn the power on, turn the power on to our run switch. Once we have linked to the remote, we'll want to find the fill, fill cal button. Hit it once, it'll put it into fill mode, sending all your hydraulic oil up to your conveyor. 
hit it a second time, it leaves oil going to your conveyor, but it opens up your metering circuit to allow oil to pass through it so we can calibrate. So this, now that we have it set to fill cal, we'll go ahead and find our digital scale. With each 9,000 cart, a digital scale is sent, and this digital scale will hold a tear weight. To do that, turn the scale on, grab one of your white pails, or whatever you're calibrating with. Once it's on, put it on there, and then push and hold the on zero button for five to 10 seconds. Once you've held it for that five to 10 seconds, let it go, and it should show you zeros on it. And then when you take the pail off, it'll actually show you the weight of that pail. Then from there, our, everything is set up. Now all we have to do is we have to take our downspout out of the airstream and put it into the calibration spout so we're actually dumping product into a pail and then throw But because we've never had this product in the tank, we're going to have to charge those augers or we're going to have revolutions without any product in it, which will give us a false cal factor. So to do that, we can go ahead on the side of the cart and we can turn on the tanks that we want to charge. So tank number one. And all we have to do is hit the play button. Once we get consistent product out, we've charged that auger, just hit the play button to stop it. You'll notice on your screen that it'll actually show you revolutions and an estimated weight. We'll want to zero that out. We can do that either from your tablet or you can do it from the side of the cart using your zero or preload button. So we touch it, you see the green light. Now you'll notice on your tablet or your phone, it's zeroed those out. Now we have to grab that pail because we don't want to use that weight in our sample. Grab a fresh pail, throw it underneath. And now we can go ahead and we can run our full sample. So again, turning, make sure that our meter's turned on and hit the play button. If you're doing a multi-tank calibration and one pail fills up faster than the other, just go ahead and turn off the corresponding switch for that tank and allow the rest to keep going. We recommend that you get two thirds of a pail for a sample. The bigger the sample, the better your cal factor is gonna work out. Once we have an adequate sample size, we can turn off Hit our play button. Now we can grab our sample. Turn on our scale. Go ahead and once it turns on and shows the weight of our tear, throw our pail on and grab our sample weight. Once we get our sample weight, we'll have to enter that in to the tablet. So you'll notice on the tablet, when we look at it, we have, we've got our revolutions, we got our estimated weight. We'll have to press next so we can enter the actual weights. Now you'll have a screen and the ones that you ran product out of and it has a, a revolution for, it'll be light gray so we can touch there for the actual weight. And you can go ahead and enter that weight, which is 14.2. You'll notice once we have that weight in there, we're good to go. We can hit the next button. Now what it'll show you on the next screen is for tank number one, your old cal factor, your new cal factor and the percent difference between the two. And our percent difference is 57.40. So we are out, but you gotta remember we put in a number for a starting factor, so it wasn't the actual cal factor. We've ran one calibration. Now what we'll wanna do is we'll actually wanna run a second calibration to verify that our new cal factor is the one we actually be, wanna be running with. But to do that, you have to remember to press save, so it saves that new cal factor to that product. Once it says saved, then we can press okay. Now we'll go ahead and we'll actually do a second calibration. But instead of going through your tablet, we're actually gonna do and put it into calibrate from your keypad, which you can do as well. So if you find button or A and you push it till you see 
and let go, you'll get that green light. That green light has told you that it's put it into calibration, which it shows you on the screen. When you're using button A, you also have to remember that the products have to be set up properly or you may be calibrating products that you don't want to have. So now that we're in calibration, we need to find one of our pails, make sure it's empty, throw it under our spout, and then we can go ahead and we can either use the keypad to turn that meter on or you can do it from your tablet or your phone by just touching the state to green. You'll notice it's turned it on the keypad and then all we have to do is hit the play button or the master switch button. You'll notice it sped up our metering auger because it had to fix our cal factor for us. So once we get an adequate sample size, we'll go ahead and stop the master switch. And now we can grab that pail. And again, we can go ahead and we can turn that scale on and weigh our sample. So now we can get our sample weight, but we can't put it into this screen, so we'll have to press next. Again, where it's light grade, we can go ahead and touch it, and we can go ahead and we can put our sample weight in there, which is 13 pounds. Press OK. Now we have all our weights in there. Press OK, and then it'll show you your old cal factor, your new cal factor, and the percent difference between the two. Right now it's at 2.8, which is good enough for me. If you wanted to verify it again, you could save that new cal factor and go ahead and run another calibration, which may get that di difference down. But because we're using floor dry, you may not get it any better. But we're going to save that new cal factor. We're going to press OK. Now the monitor is ready to go ahead and go seating, but we have to clean up everything at the back. Again, taking our downspout out of the calibration spout, putting into the airstream we want, or you're gonna have a solid strip going down the field. And then last, before we're done on the side of the cart, after we put everything away, we're gonna hit that conveyor run switch to off, which will kick our fans back on. And now we can go back into the tractor cab.